Welcome to the special edition market report with Vegas and Jim on Sunday, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. Today's date is December 8, 2019, and we got a recap of some option plays we did, and plus we have a small short list option, uh, stock list. Miss Vegas. Okay, well, I hope everyone's having a nice weekend. So let's recap Friday very quickly, and then I want to get you guys ready for this coming week. So try to make sure you have a pen and paper ready because when Jim gives you those supports and resistance, pretty accurate. Uh, so let's talk about Facebook. Uh, Friday, we had an idea to trade this. We took the um, trade actually on Thursday. Uh, we noticed that there was a lot of volume in the Facebook $200 calls. And um, what was interesting was that the actual value of those contracts on Thursday afternoon had pulled back. They were like $200 and at one point in the day. I think it was towards the morning. And then Facebook had a big knife. And what ended up happening is that those contracts, the $200 strike, um, decayed down towards 63 cents, which is $63. So we took advantage of the dips, alerted in chat, and we took advantage of the sale price of the contracts. We took them for $63 each swing traded those and then on friday um they went up a little over a hundred percent a lot of people just sold them off in the morning and so congratulations to those traders um and also you know to mention about facebook uh i definitely want to still keep watching and uh, i see also that facebook is looking to also have an office into more than 1.5 million square feet in new york um, I cannot believe it. They're apparently going to be moving into the office next year. So it looks like the lease has been done. Um, they're going to be occupying about um, 30 floors in three buildings in the luxury retail and commercial space. Um, so that's just amazing. 30 floors is a lot of units and a lot of floor space. Um, so that's going to be super expensive because their main office in Manhattan is near the Astor Place neighborhood. Um, so a Facebook spokesperson did say um, they're waiting to determine how many employees will actually work out of this new location. But wow, Facebook, that's fantastic for the city of New York. Maybe it'll have more jobs coming. So that's interesting. Um, so Jim, I'd like to hear about Facebook's chart because I want to know, like, are we going to have a continuation this week or... You know, what do you, what do you see for us? Um, you know, should we just be on our watch? I see a big catalyst for sure with that building that office in New York. I sure see a big catalyst there. Let's look at the yearly chart first. I just want to get a glance of it, kind of get a reading. You notice I started drawing a, uh, we've up, kind of been an upward trend on this, a diac upward panel, uh, <laughs> oh, upward channel with that bottom support line right here, right around that 201 area. And I think we're getting ready to rebound to a pivot point area, which is going to be right around the 205. And if we can break that 205 resistance, we can bring it up to 206.70 and 208.66. And I do believe we're still going to go up into that upward channel and try to create a double top on the year. And that yearly double top is at 204.92, more or less at 205. So let's pull up the 20-day chart, get a better look at the 20-day. I'm bullish on the trade. As you can see, we have hovered down and touched that bottom channel line right here. And that almost stops right on the trend line of that 199.40. So that's what we're going to call as first support. I'd like to see it hold, or at least the second support. I think I'm going to go ahead and draw a trend line right here for the first one, right at 221. That will be your first support right now. We're at 201 after hours. We did close at 201.05. So I do believe this thing can bounce up to the next resistance level of 2027, and that's what we got to break. And if we can do that, you see how this kind of hit this trend line up here. That's where we're going to put the next resistance, and that's going to be right around the 20272 area. And if we can break that, we can go up to this high of 20380, which I'd like to see. We saw that last week, or the week before on Friday. We did have a pretty hard little sell-off for two days in a row, and that's gave us an opportunity to get in this trade and take it off that 200 on the 20 day one hour chart we respected the nine and i think that's kind of a uh, an ascending channel on the daily 
we did have a low up here at 199.50 and we did have a high at the end of the day of 201.57 so we are kind of have a little symmetrical flag right here and I do believe we can break that resistance level and if we can it's going to be that 201.57 that high that we had for Friday so that's going to be your first resistance your first strong support is going to be right here at 221 and I won't, don't want to see it go no lower, no lower than that 199.40 and I'm going to pull up this five day one more time see if I can find any the other resistance lines that we need to break and you can stop this video at any time if you like and draw these down and we got one more right here we need to put in for your third support so that's going to be into a red line I like to keep the higher highs moving high and we're going to just go ahead and put that red line in for your first third support second one 199.40 first one 221 the resistance to break is going to be adjusted right here to 201.23 to 52. That's going to be the channel of resistance for the first one. If we can break that, we can bring it up to the other two, and that's going to be at 20207. And then this last one's going to be right here at 20270. And that's Facebook. Good, nice play last week. BA is going to be the next one, Boeing. Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, Boeing is one of those uh, tickers sometimes. It is sometimes hard to trade because it can go up and then suddenly down. And then, you know, because there's still a lot of this investigation that's really unresolved with the 737 MAX. Um, and at, at any moment, we get different pieces of news that come out with the FAA. But you know what? On Friday, there was an opportunity to trade this. The 350 calls were $0.99 cents, uh, contracts, so $99.00. And we took that all the way up to close to 405. Uh, a lot of people sold around the threes, which is great. You know, 200% trade or more. Um, if you were, had the patience to really hold towards the end of the day. I mean, that was pretty risky because, I mean, I don't, don't get who's going to buy these contracts such so last minute. Um, but what I want to point out is this. Not only was a good trade called for reversal, but the patience that was in here was phenomenal. But here is what I want you to look at. And Jim's showing you the picture. Um, I made a comment here in the room that BA can pull back to 351.84. And the resistance is 353.36. And that was actually charted by Jim. And specific details on how he charted that, he explained live on voice. And if you look right above my notes here, it uh, you can see a screenshot. I have it here printed from my desktop where it shows that the resistance it hit was exactly 353.36 to the penny. So if you want to talk about taking a trade, whether you're long on a trade, swing trading, or in an option trade, it is really, really critical to know supports and resistances because this will give you a chance to get out or hold longer. And Jim is so accurate that it kept everyone in this trade a lot longer than some of them would have probably traded had they not noticed and um, heard his explanations on that particular support and resistance so congrats to everybody and that was a great job jim thank yep. you so much what can we see on ba i'm going to draw a little trend line right here right now no i'm not going to take i'm going to take that out Erase that real fast. Okay, let's look at the yearly chart. You see we've pulled back quite a bit from the yearly high at 446.01 with all the tragic news that's happened with the trade. And we found a solid support right down here right around the 320 area. We called this out in the room. She ran on up. We follow this trade every day. It's one that you want to keep on your options watch list, that's for sure. And we've got a little resistance level up here right around the 374. I'm almost ready to clean this, this up, but we're going to bring this up to my 20-day and get a better look at it. It's starting to get pretty muffled, my chart is. We do have lower highs, which is a little concerning, and lower lows. So we did have a great run on that Friday. We had the two-day sell-off, and usually after two days, this thing likes to bounce back up. So I think this thing can go a little bit lower, maybe pull back to a lower low but that 350 is pretty solid support level that 348 anything below that's going to be a strong buy a real strong buy so 348 is going to be your your third support that's where we we don't want it to go any lower than that anything lower than 348 39 is going to be a solid buy the resistance 
which we did have a lower high Friday. Not much, but it did have a lower high. So the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be that 354.32. I'm going to pull this up on a five day. This is one you got to follow the trend. That's the only way you can play this stock is follow the trend. And then once you get in it, ride it up, take your profit. It can pull back on you, little pullbacks. And if they're higher lows, that's going to be a sign that it'll go up higher. If they're lower lows, it's a sign that it might pull back a little bit. So Friday, it was kind of one of them days where it had higher lows and higher highs. And then it kind of had an ascending triangle at the end of the day. So this thing can bounce up. We had, see what I'm saying by ascending triangle, where it kind of had these higher lows. And then it found a top up here, a double top. And it held up here at the resistance of that top. So if it breaks the 354, we're going to go higher. If not, we're going to pull back to this first support right here at 351.84. That's where I'd start looking at it. And maybe if that didn't work, I'd hold the next two lines down below it. No lower than 348.39. So that's going to be our solid support level that we're going to get in and try to buy the stock if we want to get in the trade. And I'm going to turn it into a red line. And that's going to be that 348.39. And I'll make that line a little bit thicker knowing that that's going to be my strong buy area. Anything below that. So that's another $3 dip in case it go ahead and knives. It just depends on the, the chart pattern that I'm looking at when it comes to the day. So your first strong buy support, your first support is going to be a 351.84. Then you got the 348.39. The resistance to break is going to be that 354.08. And I'm going to pull up the 10 day. And there's two more places here that we can break that resistance. That's going to be the 354.97 up to the 356.23. Don't get gun ho with this trade. Follow the trend. The trend can happen two days in a row, sell off, and it can bounce that next day. Keep that in mind. Two day sell off, bounce the next day. And that's Boeing. And that was a great call in the room, Miss Vegas. It was a great swing. Netflix is the next one we're going to talk about that we option traded last week. Netflix. Yes, I just want to mention um, Netflix was actually. Uh, day trade on Friday, really just um, really important to just keep a watch on um, some of these large cap stocks that have a run or they pull back and then, you know, you just say, okay, it's not ready right now, but you never know. Every day is a new day. So it's good to just keep a watch on these. Um, and so I had my eyes on Netflix actually the whole week and I'm glad I kept my eye on it because I actually didn't trade it at all until Friday. And so I did see an opportunity on the reversal that the 305 calls, um, and, and this was actually a little bit risky, I found, um, because sometimes when they expire the same day, as you know, um, it's very difficult sometimes for them to really have a really hard run. Uh, the volume on this at the time was a bit lower than 4,000 contracts, but I called the 305 calls, they were $58 each, and I gotta say, I wasn't expecting this move. They went as high as $230 per contract. That is just amazing. I mean, over 300%. Um, well, Maria did a great job. She sold Netflix. She said $300 gain. So she says not too shabby uh, because you know what? She was so busy because uh, she has another job uh, that she works at full time. So she was just so happy to just make a quick 300 bucks. So congrats to her. And you know what? Everyone's gains is, you know, they add up. Uh, so I love the fact that this did really well. Um, and as a matter of fact, I have Netflix and took a swing trade uh, for the 310 calls for December 20, only because it's going to take some time for this to actually start reversing. And, um, you know, I'm just going to swing this because it's going to take a lot, quite some time for it to finally get to this level again. So uh, hence the swing trades in play. Um, you don't have to consider this one here. It's a little too pricey probably for some of you. So you may want to look at a different strike price, but definitely I'd be looking at December 20 expiries and maybe go for a little bit of a higher strike price to actually bring down the price of the contract. So Jim, what are your thoughts on Netflix? Well, we've had a very hard sell off. It started getting social media's attention when the sell off down here, right around the bottom part of this sell off, it's really started getting some attention. That was right around the 254 area. It did have a 380, almost 386 high of the year with a double top. And when that double top came in, it just failed and dropped on down. 
sold off. So we're about in a pivot point area of the channel. Your first hard resistance is way up here at 342. So you got a gap to fill at 342. Sometimes you don't look at the big picture first. You just grab the one day chart or whatever and start drawing it up. But I do see that we've had a nice little rebound, but this does pull back like any other stock does and a good opportunity to get in it. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. I haven't really charted this up since this last run when it was up here in this area up here right around 313. So we pulled back to under 300 last Thursday at 299.54. I need to change this. Put support line there and another one right there. And I'm going to grab another one right here. That's a solid support right in there. You can see how many times we've kind of consolidated and pulled back and hit and consolidated on that little trend there, consolidated in here. So that's a solid support for your maybe your second one. Your first one can probably end up right in here in this area. As you can see, once I draw this line, I'll kind of run it through you. We had a little hesitation here. We had some consolidation in here with a descending pattern, but we did have two engulfing candles. The wicks were pretty big, which is saying it's fine to kind of found a resistance. Pulled back to support, ran up and hit a resistance up here right around the 30807 area. So that's what we're going to call as a resistance. We've kind of touched that a couple times right in here. So we got one more support right here we're going to draw. You can see where it's kind of stopped in here. Kind of same thing right in here. So we're going to draw a trend line right there. These are going to be your support levels. And we do have another one right here. And we're going to make this into a red this one into a red line, no lower than this one right here. I don't want to see it go no lower than that. <clears throat> That's going to be the 30220 30 area. It's going to be a solid support. We're building a little channel in here. We had a two-day sell-off. Notice, you know, here we go back to that two-day rule on these big tickers. Hard sell-off, little bounce, then two-day sell-off with lower highs. Had a rebound. Found resistance up in here, another two-day sell-off, then it rebounded almost back up to here. So you could get a little pullback maybe to support level, and these are going to be your supports. The first one's going to be at 305.55. That's going to be a solid support. Your second one's going to be 304.74 and at 304.64 with a low strong buy at 302.20 with a resistance to break at 308. Your second resistance is going to be right around the 310 area. So let's not try to take it to the moon. Let's take it little by little. And as we go little by little, I keep adding trend lines in here. It's going to be your third resistance. Your first one at 308.47. Second one at 310.45. And then you got a 311.31. And if in case you're, I'm running these off, I got these numbers right over here. That's where I like to put them. They don't interfere with all these numbers over here, and I can see the charts a lot better. So your strong buy, no lower than 302, and the resistance to break has got to be 308.47. And those are the option trades that we did last week. Now we're going to give you a, a couple stocks into this week, and first one's going to be Johnson & Johnson. Okay, so, you know, Johnson & Johnson, we keep hearing about this baby powder and asbestos. And uh, that seems to be kind of like water under the bridge now, because when I actually look at the Johnson & Johnson, uh, actually weekly chart, uh, it looks extremely bullish to me and definitely looks like it's definitely overbought and it's having a lot of strength in the actual chart. The other thing too um, that I did see about Johnson & Johnson was that they did have some news about them supporting um, asbestos in Rwanda so there was a uh, news article that came out today about that so definitely keep Johnson and Johnson on your watch list Ebo um, Ebola and, sorry you said asbestos it's Ebola oh no but I was talking about asbestos with regards to the baby powder earlier oh yeah um yeah but in Rwanda. sorry did I say something wrong that's all right in Rwanda yeah, so moving on, yeah. um, the chart looks pretty good. So I'm going to just let Jim talk about what's happening with this chart because I like it for um, some option calls. I don't have any at the moment, but I'm definitely going to look at these this week for sure. 
All right. I like the idea that they want to help people with diseases in other countries. And that Ebola has been a big problem, that's for sure. So the, um, let's talk about the chart. We kind of have, you know, kind of have a pullback chart. We, we had support back down here in this lower area with a channel for as four months went on between that low support. I almost have to clean this chart up too. It's starting to get a little dirty but 126.71 all the way up to right around the 133 area so now we broke out of that pattern last month we've created some new highs I think like Miss Vegas says it, the asbestos deals almost all shook off and over with by now so we got a long resistance at 142.10 we got to see and then we got another one in here getting a little choppy but I'm going to try to draw me a, a trend line kind of hard one to tell in a way so let's put one right there and I'm looking at this too I just now noticed that where it closed right there on on Friday so let's pull up the 20 day chart get a good look at 20 day we did have a deep a, a nice little engulfing flag at the first of the day where she went ahead and with a fairly small wick so we're gonna put that resistance right there at 141.17 and then we got another little resistance right in here at 140.76. Solid support, <laughs> no lower, would be this 139.50. I like to see that hold. That was an ascending triangle breakout. So that's a solid resistance, which now <coughs> has become support. That's the 139.50. And there's nothing in between because of that big engulfing candle, but I might find something here on the daily one minute right there we got a little support level right there and then you had that big engulfing up probably a big old order came in TTM was on fire right at that moment she pulled back and some chickens got out of the roost out of the hen house and then the roosters came back gathered them all up and here we are with a kind of a resistance level up here right around the 141.44 so that's going to be your third your fourth probably your third resistance your first support is going to be this 140.35 Second, 140.10, and we got to have this 139.50 hold, which was that ascending triangle breakout with a resistance to break of 140.144. And Johnson & Johnson has enough, enough volume and momentum to keep this stock going. And I want to pull this 20-day chart up one more time and just kind of show you that we have had a breakout on the chart. We were down here at 130. It had that four-day sell-off, and then we had the big breakout, and it's kind of ran up ever since. So we've had higher highs and higher lows. This can, like I said, pull back to that top of that ascending triangle, and that's going to be no lower than 139.50. And that's really not that big of a dip. So that's going to be Johnson & Johnson. Next one's going to be one that kind of been uh, sold off here lately, and it's one that we like, especially this time of the year, and that's Starbucks. Well, you guys know I love Starbucks, especially the caramel macchiato. I just had one the other day. I just love it. Um, I wish I could make one of those at home, but uh, nobody does it better than Starbucks. And you know what? Uh, Dan Nathan, um, who was actually commenting at the end of the day on CNBC on Last Chance Trade, he actually was talking about risk reversal. And um, he talked about Starbucks, and he really liked it. Um, mentioned that, you know what? Starbucks had you know good earnings, good company. And the fact that it's at this price level, he would not be surprised to see this longer term around $100. And I'm pretty in agreement with him. Uh, I love that price target. I think Starbucks probably worth more than $100 uh, over time. But I definitely love it at this level, especially at this time of the year. Um, they have all these like specialty coffees coming up as well for this time of the month. But nevertheless, you know, when you look at the weekly chart, I mean, on Friday, it had a nice pocket pivot. Also, it did cross above the 50-day support. So I really like that the strength on here is building up. And I also have to say, I also saw a lot of buying happening, um, not so much really on the options, but really more so on the actual stock. So I did see a lot of uh, positions going through on the buy side on Starbucks. Um, I do have an option swing in play on Starbucks. And the option swing we have is the $86 calls uh, expiring this Friday. And those are $94 each. 
or you can look at the $87 ones, which are $46 each. Uh, the stock was actually flagging also intraday. And so if this can, let's say, continue on Monday, uh, if it actually can flag again, uh, it could actually have a breakout on the daily. So hence the swing was called and the trade is currently in play as I speak. So um, definitely if you're not in Starbucks and you like Starbucks, uh, you should definitely look at it uh, this week and consider it for a swing trade. And I'll keep you posted on this one. Jim, let's hear about that Starbucks. Yeah, I was checking out the chart, but also they got a new drink out here. It's called the New Holiday Classic, introducing introducing Irish Cream Code Brew, here for a lifetime. And it's 200 calories. So there you 40% megagrams of cholesterol, total fat, 12 Gs, but this would be one that you might want to try it out. It's only here for a short time and limited time. There you go. It's the Starbucks chart. We've got the yearly. We did have a nice little pullback on it. I was surprised because we were been pretty bullish on this trade ever from 60 bucks down here at the first of the year. Vegas was calling it out every day. It had been a nice one to hold all year long because that sucker, look at that. It's ran all the way from, from that's when new management took over. And it ran from that 60 all the way up to almost 100 bucks, And then she's pulled back to the 200 EMA right here and found support. That's why I like using these three moving averages. That's the 200 EMA, the 34, and the 9 EMA. It just tells me that it's still bullish and follows the trend. When it starts to disrespect that 9, it's telling me that it's a sell-off on the yearly chart. So we're going to pull up the 20, take a look at it. We do have a little low support down here right around the 82 area. I mean, that's low, 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 low. Um, your solid support, <clears throat> I'd say you're probably your buy entry place would be right around here at 70, 74, 84.73. And I'm going to turn that into a red line because I want to keep that in mind when, I'm, when I see that number, if it pulls back to that area. Then we had a pin, had an ascending triangle breakout right here with two big old engulfing candles on an hourly chart and she broke up the resistance right here is 8646 and then we got a support level right here and I'm going to put that right there at that 8621 and that's running right into the 9 EMA on a on a 20 day 1 hour chart so let's pull up the daily 1 minute that's the one I trade on I see a low first low support of the day I want to see it hold no lower than 85.52. That's going to be my first support. I'm going to pock that in with a red line. That's going to be my solid buy entry. If it pulls back at all, that's where I want to get in the trade. If not, you got your other three support levels. And that's going to be the 86.21, 85.94, and 85.74 with a resistance to break this 86.46. Yeah, we did go up a little higher than that, but I'm using this trend line because that is previous history <clears throat> that I'm following up. I always like to have a double confirmation. So, and then we're going to pull up the 20 just to find a couple more resistances past that. We have to actually go back farther than that. We'll go to a three month. So we got a little bit of resistance levels right in here. 86.73 is one of them. And then, oh, this is real solid right up in here. It's going to be a hard resistance. And that's going to be, and I'm finding that right in this area right in here. This hard resistance of right here at 87. As you can see, it run right into that 34. And that's 34 EMA. So let me pull this back up to 20 day. Solid strong buy at 85.52. No lower than... I don't want to see go no lower than 85.94. I want to see the resistance to break right here at 86.46 and run it up to 87. And then we start looking for new highs. <clears throat> That's going to be Starbucks. And then we got Apple. Well, I love Apple. As you guys know, I'm a loyal <clears throat> Apple person, except I don't have the iPhone because I got so used to the Android. But I am going to tell you that come 2020, I'm definitely getting the Apple 11 Pro. Um, that's definitely going to happen this year. 
Uh, so I loving Apple because new 52 week closing high, the Bollinger Bands are squeezing. I love when the Bollinger Bands squeeze because I'm really looking for a range uh, expansion to happen. So I really like what I'm seeing here right now. And so Apple just keeps going and going and going. I mean, I'm telling you, if you guys love like longer term stocks, you know, I have someone that I know that has uh, money to invest and, you know, they don't really want to trade stocks want to be they don't have time to do options so i said to them you know what why don't you just put your money in some safe stocks like you know companies like mcdonald's and apple and starbucks i mean these are good large cap stocks that have good fundamentals that you know what even if they pull back you're not going to freak out and worry that oh my god my stock's down i'm down so much money because these kind of companies always 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 recover and they just always just make higher highs so Apple, to me, in my opinion, is one of those stocks that um, is going to do very well. And we'll probably see this. I won't be surprised, like I said, in 2020. This will be in the 300 zone. So, Jim, let's look at Apple because this chart's delicious. Yep. We uh, we look at Apple every day. We, I mean, this is, had, this is a Buffett trade. He loves the stock. He's got in it when it was way down here under 144. But we did have a 142 resistance breakout at the beginning of the year. And re all the way up to a new high on Friday at 271. Incredible. Had a beautiful little breakout, too, on a four-day run that happened last Tuesday. We had a two-day sell-off, and then she just went ahead and broke them highs, which and then Friday was just a wonderful day for, for Apple. It just it ran from that breakout here at 265 all the way up to 270.61. The only way I'm going to be able to look at this now is to bring it to the 20 day. And I'm kind of seeing a su low support right down in here at the 264 level. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a big red line. I don't want to see it go no lower than that. That's going to be a strong buy for me when I go to maybe get in on a trade. If it does pull back to that area, we do have a resistance level right here. This is going to be your probably your strong support. And that's going to be at the 269.12. So that's a dollar. 50 drop from there if it wants to pull back your first support is going to be right in here and we're going to draw that so first support right down here at the 27007 level so that that runs right into the nine on the five day one hour i mean the one hour chart on the 20 day resistance to break i don't know why i got oh i think i called this no we'll look at this here in a second when i pull it up to the daily one minute, I think I was talking about a lower high there to maybe get out of the trade. But people that were in the options call, so we're going to go ahead and look at that. Yeah. Usually when I see lower highs like this, this when it comes down and it touches down and it runs back up and it's got a lower high, I usually make that a sell position where I want to get out of the trade. And as you see, it did sell off pretty hard from there. Not much, I mean, 80 cents, and then bounced back up, created a lower high again, sold off and hit that 200, hit that trend line, and we hit touched down that trend line about four times before it decided to go ahead and get up to that double top. It did not quite make it to the double top yet, but did tells me that buyers came into it in close of the day, which gives me an idea that the buyers are still interested in this trade. So I do believe we're going to break that 271 resistance level. Now you got to remind you, we're getting up here. We're getting up here. We don't want to. The risk are going to be a lot higher. The 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 profit taking is going to probably be a little bit less. And it's going to start consolidating. We can go up a little bit higher though. But this 271, and we kind of got to look at the analyst and what the news comes out. But so far we've been very bullish on this trade. This was a beautiful call that we made come right out of the gate and this is what things i look for especially on these big tickers as you see we were at 265.85 that morning with a double bottom with a little bit higher low and when i see that higher low and then that breakout that's an indicator that we're going to have another breakout again and we did we did have a run from that 267 all the way up to right around the 269 area to the 269.30 and i was calling this out also in the room and People got in the trade once it hit that 34, it disrespected that 9. Then we had that high of 271. Then she started pulling back to that 200. I drew this trend line right in here once we hit that 
that bottom right there and then we pulled back and hit that a couple more times so let's see what this thing wants to do come out monday morning i'm bullish on it vegas is bullish on it anytime it pulls back follow the trend but this is we're at a year high and it's real nice and this thing can go higher and that's it for the aftermarket report um i want to just no, I don't know what seal One oh more. yeah we have that's seal nice penny play yes yeah Jim's not focused. Um, <laughs> he's too much into Apple. But on Seal, um, they did have uh, a USDA patent um, that was given to them on December the 4th. Yep. And uh, this is a company that focuses on central nervous system disorders. And they apparently got a notice, notice of allowance from the U.S. Patent Office. Um, and there's a patent number. And, um, you know, if you actually look at this chart here on Seal, I mean, it's looking really good. I mean, this is, you want to talk about a bottom play. This, to me, has hit the bottom. And uh, I would definitely add this on your watch list because Celios uh, Therapeutics had a beautiful pocket pivot, pivot and a nice volume surge. And I love pocket pivots as well. So, Jim, let's hear about that chart since you love that pick. Oh, yeah. I just love the momentum and the bottom play of it so far. And we're going to try to draw a few trend lines on this it had a high of 1044 up here at the first of the year and it's pulled back to a low of 72 cents and when that patent news came out it got a little bit bullish on it last week and ran from a i'd say a support level for a couple weeks now from 8032 so we're going to call that a low low support and i'm going to try to dig in here and find another support i'm finding a good one there at 87.75 and then another one right in here where we had that little breakout. Oh, I need to go back down here. I didn't get that one in. 87.75 right there. Don't want to mess that up. And we got a resistance to break here at 106 something. And then we got 111 right there. And then I'm going to come in here. And I want to hit this little bottom trend line right in here on this chart. That's going to be a hard resistance at 144. You're getting a little chart lesson on this baby. That's how I try to find resistance levels. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to magnify this up a little bit. And I'm seeing a little spot right in right there. Between 122 and a little bit under that. Right there at 117.23. So that's the way we're going to look at this trade. We're going to come back. This is going to be your low third support, no lower than 91 cents. If it decides to pull back, you might get in a little bit higher than that, right around the 92 cent area, 93. And then the resistance is the one to kind of support level right here. It's a pivot point probably on the trade, and that's going to be at 106. And then the resistance levels that we're going to look at, don't try to take it to the moon. We've got to break the 11.28, the 111.28. The ones that 111.28 is a hard resistance. If we can break that, we're going to 117.23, 122.28, 26, something like that. And if that breaks, we can bring it up to 144. But this is one you just want to kind of watch the momentum, see how it acts first thing out of the gate, see if uh, the buyers are interested in trading it. If not, it'll pull back to that low support at 91.19. And maybe bounce back up to resistance and that would be the 106 or it could pull back just a little bit break that 106 area and then we'll become bullish on it and run it up to 122 with a hard resistance at 111. i hope that made sense to you i'm saying this is a 50 50 opportunity that if it's still bullish it will run up and break if not it'll pull back and this 106 will become your resistance area I always work it that way. So that's S-E-E-L. And we're in it by one more time. Low, low support if it pulls back at 91. That 106 becomes resistance. That comes hard to break. If it does decide to bounce on up and shows some, some, some bullish pattern and breaks to 111, we could run it up to 122. And then it'll make up its mind if it wants to break. If not, it'll pull back to that 106. And that's going to be S-E-E-L. And that's it. Now I can say that it concludes the Sunday edition report. Also, I want to mention that we do have a website. 
and you can link to our Twitter page here. Our account now is up to 842 followers. We're trying to build that up. Vegas posts alerts in here throughout the day. She also posts some in her stock twits account. And that's right here. Hit that second thing. Follow her there. Get her some more followers. She's really getting popular. 5,600 people following her. That's about double mine. Good job, Miss Vegas. And do you have anything else you'd like to say? You know, I just want to say it's been a great week. Um, and I just want to comment that you don't have to trade every day. Um, sometimes everyone feels they have to trade every day or every day you're going to find a home run. Um, you know, you got to just really wait for the right setups. The money is made sometimes waiting. And, you know, there are going to be some days where there's not tons of things to trade. And there's nothing wrong with that because when the time comes to actually trade, you will actually be able to make a lot more money. So uh, there's nothing wrong sometimes to just not trade as much or take a breather that day. And uh, you're welcome to come visit us in our room. We have the free trial and I'm really excited. We're seeing so many new members signing up and joining. And that just goes to the fact that we give so much support on voice all the time, all day. And it's nice to see that people appreciate it and that they love the teachings that Jim gives throughout the day. Um, I've gotten so many compliments. I'll have to probably do a separate video on what members are saying uh, because you know what? It's just so inspiring and rewarding. And for me, and I can even say for Jim, that's what gives us the most pleasure is when people really comment and appreciate. So that's wonderful to see. So on that note, we hope you have a great trading week and uh, we'll definitely be speaking to you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. Today's date, December 8th, 2019, and we love stocks.